It's Friday, March 10th, 2017. I'm your host, Sarah Mannell. We have a great show in store for you today. The New Classics Company offers free improv every Friday night at the Geyer Barn. We're going to learn more during our weekly arts and culture segment. Marine and Environmental Affairs staff are gearing up for the annual herring run. We'll find out more about that with Natural Resource Officer Amy Croteau. And we're going to learn about when parents can register for the Recreation Division's Summer Leisure Program on this episode of Barnstable Today. But first, let's go ahead and get a look at today's top headlines. Town officials continue working on the FY18 budget. The proposed capital improvements plan projects for FY2018 is complete and will be submitted to town council by March 15th. Staff are also actively reviewing the proposed FY18 operating budget with departments with an anticipated submittal to the town council by May 4th. You can learn more about the proposed fiscal year budgets on the Open Budget website. You can access the Open Budget website by visiting the town's website and clicking through to the Finance Division. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see that Open Budget uh, link on that web page. The Barnstable Recreation Division is teaming up with the Cape Cod YMCA to offer waterfront and lifeguard training. Waterfront and lifeguard training will be available for ages 15 to 18 at a cost of $180. Junior lifeguard training will be available for ages 13 to 18 at a cost of $60. Both of those programs begin March 28th. You can learn more about the program by contacting the Recreation Division. The town clerk's office is reminding residents to return their annual census form. Town census forms were mailed earlier this year. Be sure to look yours over, make any necessary changes, and then send it back to the clerk's office. Even if you have no changes, you still need to sign that form and send it back. This is going to make your voting easier and will keep you up to date on the voter registration system. You cannot register to vote on that form. Contact the clerk's office with any questions. While well, you're looking for a job, the town of Barnstable is a great place to work and has several seasonal and year-round positions available. You can now apply online by clipping, clicking on the job title you're interested in and clicking on the apply link. If this is the first time you're applying uh, using our online job application, you will need to create an account and select a username and password. Uh, once that set is set up, you can build an application by clicking on the build a job application link. This application can be saved and used to apply for more than one job opening. To see what positions are currently available, uh, go ahead and visit the town's website and click through to the employment page. Up next, we're going to learn more about the new classics company, Improv Night, at the Geyer Barn. So, Danny, tell me a little bit about Improv. I've never actually watched Improv. Well, uh, what we do here um, is put on an Improv show every Friday night for our audiences. Um, and Improv, at the heart of it, is really just about conversation. Um, what we're doing right now is, is kind of Improv. Um, it's really, I often tell beginners, it's not going into it thinking that you're going to make a joke every five seconds. That's not the right way to go about it. You really just want to keep talking. And as long as you can keep talking and keep saying something, um, eventually the humor just finds its way into the natural conversation. Because improv draws funny people, usually. <laughs> so that seems really challenging to me. I'm like the news person, so really used to having a script, really used to preparing for interviews, right, making notes. Is it a tough thing to do when you get in here and get in front of people and start acting? Well, it can be difficult for first timers getting over that. Oh my God, everyone expects me to be funny. Everyone, you know, if you're not hearing laughter, you're thinking, oh my God, I'm bombing. But that's really, that's not the essence of it. I mean, as long as you just keep the scene flowing, like I said, that humor comes naturally. So getting over that initial, I'm up in front of an audience, they're all watching me, what, what's going to happen? That, that takes some time, but after a couple rounds, you get used to it. How have you enjoyed, you've been here at the Geyer Barn performing on Friday nights for a while now. How long has that been going on? Uh, I've been personally involved with the company for two years now. This will be the new classic company's fourth summer uh, in the Geyer Barn. Um, I got involved through improv workshops uh, that we hope to revisit this summer. Um, I came and they were like, hey, why don't you start coming to our rehearsals? And I got involved and eventually took more of a leadership role in helping to run the rehearsals and design 
shows for performance. So how does it work? Do you come on a Friday night with a, a some sort of plan in mind at all? I mean, yeah. you're, the, you're the director, <laughs> so what are you directing exactly? Well, on Tuesdays, uh, the group gets together and that's open to essentially anyone who's interested and wants to play. And we rehearse games. It, it's interesting to say rehearse because you never get up and do the same thing you've done in rehearsal. It's different every time. And that's part of the challenge on Tuesdays is, you know, we retread a lot of the same ground, but you need to make it new and inventive every time. So we work on just our general improv skills, and sometimes we practice new games if we want to introduce them into the shows. Uh, and then through rehearsals, you know, that brings us to Friday, where we all get up here, and I'll come with a list pre-prepared that no one knows about. That's, that's what makes it improv. And that shows uh, the games that we'll play and who will play the games. And, they find that out as we announce it to the audience. So we take an audience suggestion and we're off. Now, what do you hope that the audience takes away from coming to an improv night? A smile, <laughs> like a laughter. I mean, that's what we're after. Um, we want to get people interested in, in our art and what we do. We want to get people interested in this wonderful space. Um, you know, people often say there's, there's, not, no, there's nothing to do on Cape, but that's not true. They're just not looking hard enough. We, we do it here every Friday. And the greatest thing I think about Improv Nights is it is free to attend. Anyone can drop, drop by. Uh, you do accept donations, though. That goes right back to the company. Yes, indeed. Uh, all of our donations go towards our regular season programming. In the summer, we put on stage shows, stage readings. We host movie screenings on the green. Um, we're very involved and active in workshops and, and things like that. So, If someone wants to get involved, maybe find out where you're going to be, when you're going to be, or if they want to come to a Tuesday night uh, improv group, where can they learn more information about you guys? Uh, they should look us up, uh, newclassicscompany.org, and find us on Facebook, uh, New Classics Company. Um, we're looking into maybe doing some... Um, workshops to get people more involved so that we can, you know, expand and uh, expands our group. See, that was improv. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, hey, so. thank you so much, Danny, for joining us and telling us all about this great opportunity for residents to come out and get a few laughs. Of course, Really thank appreciate you. it. And sorry, man, if you like what you see from this interview, uh, <laughs> c come and check us out Friday nights at 7.30. Like she said, it's free. Our shows are PG-13, so it's fun for everyone involved. Thank you so much uh, for telling us all about it. Of course, my guest today, Danny Price, he is the uh, improv director with New Classics Company. Uh, all right, we're going to play a game called 1 to 4, 4 to 1. 1 to 4, 4 to 1. Jamie, Maxing, Matt, Chelsea. Just like that. Now, how this works is we're going to begin this scene with Jamie here. Now, how this works is that Jamie is going to begin his scene. At any point during the scene, I can <laughs> my hands. At which point, Maxie will come into the scene. At which point, Matt will come into the scene. And then Chelsea. Now, each person, when they enter, they will bring a brand new scene into the scene. We use that word a lot around here. Uh, how, how this works is that when all four characters are into the scene, uh, they will find their own motivation or they will be given impetus to leave from the other players. And they will leave in the reverse order they came. So they will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1. Jamie, mm. you're painting a self-portrait. Mm. Do I look like that? I need a mirror. Jamie 3000, tell me, I'm beautiful, right? Yes, <laughs> you look very beautiful. Because you can't lie. You're the truth robot. I, I hope I got the right brand, right? Yes. I am programmed to shun all falsehoods <laughs> and speak only what is verifiable. Yes. Hey man, what do you think you're doing, huh? What, huh? Huh? What you, you, trying, you trying to talk to my girl over here? Oh no, 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 no! I'm just, I'm just uh, being Listen, friendly. Here, 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 this. What but is Johnny, this, huh? you don't have to get so defensive. We were just talking, he all right? He was putting his hand out like he was gonna touch your hand, and I no, don't like that. We like casualties like that. I was just shaking her hand, man. It's just, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. 
Hey, well, let me talk to my girl, okay? Just all right, okay. hey, chill out, man. Okay. Johnny, you gotta stop this. You gotta be stop being so territorial all the time. What, what, okay, I am a... territory somewhere else and you can just stay out of it. Okay, fuck. So, Jamie. uh, yes? <laughs> Jamie 3000. Yes. Affirmative. So, Tim's been texting me. It, it seems real, right? Like, he wants more than, you know, just a casual thing. Like, he wants more of a relationship. Let me analyze his vocabulary. He only wants to be your friend. I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's almost time for the herring to start running. We're going to learn more about herring runs in Barnstable with Natural Resource Officer Amy Croto. And joining me now over the phone is Amy Croto. She's a Natural Resource Officer for the town of Barnstable. Amy, it's about time to start thinking about herring runs. Almost, uh, yes. <laughs> tell me what you guys do. Uh, you guys do a lot of work, actually, to make sure those herring runs stay up to date and are adequate. Uh, what do you all need to think about during this time of year? So we do have about seven or so miles of active herring run in the town of Barnstable. And part of our job as natural resource officers is also to act as herring wardens. And we have to make sure that in the springtime, our streams are clear so these anadromous fish species can go upstream into our freshwater ponds to spawn. We also have to make sure that in the fall, there is clear passage for the young or fry to move from the ponds back out into the ocean. Um, it is time consuming. We have a lot of runs in this town that are sort of in need of some rehabilitation, so it can be a little bit tricky. Um, and we also have other species like the American eel and sea run brook trout to think about when we are managing our herring runs. So there are a lot of, um, you know, thoughts that go into it when we're maintaining them. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, too, I think you use a, vo a lot of volunteers as well when you start counting. Uh, how does that work? And I think you train volunteers to do this. Yes. Yeah, so a couple of years ago, some people may remember that I had started a count program for the Centerville River Run. Well, currently, because of the um, extreme drought of last year, there is absolutely no water in the Centerville River Herring Run. So we will not have a count program there this year. Um, but it has been determined that a secondary count program at Middle Pond, which is part of the Marsons Mills River Herring Run, would be beneficial. And so Three Bays Preservation runs the herring count at Mill Pond in Marsons Mills. Um, and I will be starting a count program at Middle Pond, uh, which is in the Mystic Lakes neighborhood, it also in Marsons Mills. Wow. Um, we have a training that's coming up on March 18th from 1 to 3 p.m. and will be held at the Liberty Hall um, in Marsons Mills on Main Street. Wonderful. And does anyone need to sign up for that or can they just show up? Um, I mean, anybody can sign up um, or just show up, but because we're serving uh, refreshments and some food, it would be nice if you kind of gave either Judy Heller from Three Base Preservation or myself via email um, a heads up if you were planning on coming. Now, what, what time, what kind of commitment uh, do volunteers need to make for this program? How much time are they donating? Uh, and what kind of hours are we looking at? Morning hours or afternoon hours? So the counts run from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And they're broken into um, four three-hour blocks. And what you're looking for ideally is one 10-minute count 
per hour in each of those hour-long blocks throughout the day. So if a volunteer wanted to participate um, in a more lengthy way than just doing a 10-minute count, then they would show up at the last 10 minutes of the hour, and they could do 10 minutes at the last bit of the hour and then the first 10 minutes of the second part of the hour. Um, if somebody were to only want to count river herring one time in the count season, that would be fine. If they wanted to show up and pick an hour slot in which they could pick any 10 minutes within that hour every single day for the duration of the run, they could do that as well. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, uh, here's my question. Why is it so important to have an accurate count on the herring? So river herring are currently a species that are in decline. They're a species of special concern. Um, they're managed sort of dually because there are two species, bluebacks and alewives. There's been a moratorium on the harvest of river herring since 2005, and in order for any towns to open any herring runs to harvest in the future, they would need to create a sustainable fishery management plan that's approved not only by Division of Marine Fisheries but also by the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission prior to allowing any harvest within those runs. In order to do that, um, having counts established gives you an idea of what your resting you know, population is, and so you can make thresholds for harvest based on that. That would be safe and sustainable. So without those counts, you really cannot entertain the opportunity of opening any of the herring runs. You know, Amy, I, I have heard so many people since I moved here I, more, over six years ago, um, how they go and watch the herring run. Uh, I have never done this. Where is the best place for me to go witness this and see it for myself? So in the town of Barnstable specifically, yes. two of the best places to actually watch the herring while they're running are at Mill Pond, right on the corner of Route 149 and Route 28, um, or over at what we call the Flume, which is where the second count program will actually be held. Um, a lot of our herring runs vastly run through private property and aren't accessible by the general public. These two areas are places that are, in fact, accessible by the public and where you can view lots of fish running at once. And how do we know when to hit it so we can see it? So currently, the water temperature as of yesterday was um, cresting 39 degrees Fahrenheit. And alewives who will show up first will actually start their spawning run at about 48 degrees. So when the water in, say, like Prince Cove reaches about 48, um, you'll start to see massive numbers of fish showing up to spawn. Wow. Awesome. Can't wait to check it out for myself. Thank you, Amy, for telling us everything we know, need to know about herring runs and uh, here in the town of Barnstable. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a great day. You as well. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Our guest today, Amy Croto. She is a natural resource officer in the town of Barnstable. Well, believe it or not, summer is just around the corner. We're going to learn more about the Recreation Division's Summer Leisure Program with Director of Leisure Services, Patty Machado. Patty, thanks so much for joining me today. We have so much to talk about. First of all, very excited about this. The Leisure Program registration is coming up, and th th these spots really fill up fast. Yes, so they do. if someone's interested, tell me a little bit about the Leisure Program. Um, the Leisure Program is five days a week, Monday through Friday in the summertime, seven weeks. We start on um, the week of July 4th, and we run right through until um, the middle of August when we get thrown out of the schools, basically, um, because the schools are coming in to set up for the school year. So um, we have Hyannis West, we have Centerville Elementary School, Barnstable West Barnstable Elementary School, and um, then we're at Centerville Rec because we don't have enough schools that we're able to utilize. Um, and it, as well, we have two programs at the intermediate school. So we have this 5th, um, 6th, and then 7th, 8th. Um, at the intermediate school. And you guys do some really awesome oh, activities. So I fun. mean, I'm really excited about this. I'm trying to push my uh, little guy to join in this summer. Be this is his last, this will be his last year oh, possible. Yeah. He's going into eighth grade, and kids who are entering eighth grade can still participate in this yes. program, which is really great at Barnstable Intermediate School. And they get to do some really fun things. They go on field trips, they get to go to the beach. That must be just. Yeah, they do. They, they, and they get the options of doing some things, um, they get to do their. Um, an arts and craft. We, we try and do programs that are geared towards that age group. Um, they also get to do um, sports, a lot of activities. They also get to develop and um, make their own, their own camp um, sports program. So they develop their own kind of games. Um, 
some are board games, some are, um, but, but we help with the creativity in that. They, and then they share that with their other camps. So when the camps get together, they actually share um, the different games that they've developed. Um, so they're, they're unique to their own, their own programs. They also do um, a talent show here on the Village Green, all 400 kids, and um, it's quite, it's amazing um, some of um, what they're able to perform on. Their singing is, um, yeah. Never know. Might be in the voice soon. <laughs> I know. I love. I love seeing everybody get together. That's one of my favorite events yeah. to watch, and we've covered it in the past. It is so adorable yeah. watching all of the kids really and is. counselors uh, get together <laughs> because the <laughs> interactions they really yeah. form a bond over the summer, yeah. and I love seeing those interactions between the the counselors and the the kids. Yeah. They uh, really uh, seem to. Th they're having they're fun. just like kids themselves, and that's the whole idea with the counselors that we hire. As responsible as they are. Um, they need to be able to interact as, as a kid and understand where kids are coming from and, and, and play at their level and have some fun and not be so competitive. And um, some of that is learning lesson for them as well because they are competitive. But um, we, we do really well. Michelle Davies does an amazing job with the hiring and getting just the right um, group of people. And we try and, and do as m much diversity as possible in our hiring. Um, you know, last year we were very fortunate. We got a, quite a few Brazilian um, young people to work and um, that really helped you know for the kids that uh, you know have language, English as their second language um, most of those kids do okay it's their parents that we have a hard time communicating with so it really makes a difference having um, a broad you know we'll have the creative creative we'll have the competitive um, we have the laid-back kids the hyperactive kids um, we try and have a little variety so that it, someone can connect wonderful and we should mention registration for yes. Uh, residence begins March 21st, so yes. put that on your calendar. Yes. Um, definitely an Go in day. now. That's, let's say just go in now, make sure everything is set, make sure you know your um, code to get in. You, you need your password. Um, for some reason, some people, you know, they only register for this one program. Um, you need to keep it somewhere, put it in your phone so that you have that um, password because it's imperative in order to register. Um, and a lot of that seems to be what the number one problem is they don't remember their password. Uh, we will be changing the grade, so that shouldn't be as much. You may go in right now today and see that the grade is. We haven't changed them yet. We're going to wait to the last minute um, to change the grades. And we will have an in, in house um, next week um, during the Thursday and Friday. We'll be running uh, mocks with all our staff to make sure that the system is running exactly how it's supposed to act. Um, I know in the spring we had a little glitch with um, the actual whole town computer system um, caused us to have a problem with registration, but um, Danny's ready and Danny Wood is up there ready and to make it all happen again. So we should have a smooth sailing. Wonderful. And I do want, before I let you go, I do want to chat about this. Oh, yes. This is such a really cool program. The Barnstable Youth Commission is working to get together a uh, job fair yes. for the youth, which yes. is such an amazing opportunity. You already have many businesses uh, joining, taking part, that are gonna show up for the job fair, but you're looking to get even more businesses. Right, if you're a business and you're out there and you need to have um, young people, again, you have to know the child labor laws, and that's one of the reasons why we're having a youth job fair. The Cape Cod Times is running an adult fair, um, which is great, but a lot of people don't understand that youth have all these different laws that you have to follow. So it is important that you are hiring youth and you understand what the laws are and um, the child labor laws are um, to make sure that you're following those. So um, if you're interested and you want to get a hold of us, you can call the um, HYCC, um, talk to Amy or George, and they'll take care of getting you uh, in a t on a table. Um, we have um, Warren Rutherford is going to be coming in, and some of the seniors that have run um, many uh, run their own businesses are going to come in and mentor and help um, kids understand how to fill out a job application, um, you know, how to uh, do a resume, and how to interview. Um, so, so they'll have people there. They have coaches there, um, so that if they need help, they can go in and then meet with um, the different people. Some of the places will probably do interviewing right on site. Others will set up interviews. Um, so either way, excuse me, you'll Wonderful. be able to. Um, Wonderful. It's so important. I think uh, so many youth can find a job, but we have a very seasonal economy, yes. and uh, I think really they can take advantage of that. Yeah, and these uh, will so probably this, is a good time. this will probably open up doors to full time. I mean, I know Shaw's and. Um, Shaw's and Stop and Shop will write in right away because they, you know, they're looking for baggers and people to stock shelves and um, 
you know, why not train the, the young people to take these positions so that we can get, and they can do that while they're going to school. You know, they'll work around their schedule while they're in school. Um, and, and it's always nice to have a little cash in your pocket so that you can, you know, get around to do the fun things you want to do here on the Cape. That's right. And this is for the whole Cape. Um, I, you know, it's the Barnesville Youth Commission that's putting it on, but uh, we welcome businesses from all over the Cape. Um, you know, it's a, we, we've got a lot of Barnstable, but we'd love to have from everywhere. We're going to be reaching out um, to the whole Cape, all the schools on Cape Cod, so um, to have people come. It's 2.30 to um, 5 o'clock on April 12th, which is a Wednesday. The school vacation starts the next week, so this is a great opportunity for kids to come in, get an application, um, and again, uh, hopefully we can get them on board before the craziness starts. Sounds good. Thank you, Patty, for You're stopping welcome. by and giving us an update on everything we need to know in the Recreation Division. We Thank really you. appreciate it. Our guest today, Director of Leisure Services, Patty Machado. Thank you. <laughs> now it's time to find out what's happening around town in today's community calendar. You can celebrate the Emerald Isle and all things Ireland at the Barnstable Senior Center this month during their annual St. Patrick's Day lunch. Guests will enjoy Judy Red's famous corned beef and cabbage as well as traditional Irish entertainment from Sean Murphy and Friends, along with a few other surprises. Uh, purchase your tickets early at the Senior Center. This fun and memorable yearly event sells out quickly. The St. Patrick's Day lunch will be held at the Senior Center Thursday, March 16th from noon to 2.30. The event is sponsored by the Friends of the Barnstable County on a Council on Aging. The Sturgis Library will host a book discussion this month focused on The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. The famous book was recently made into a television series. The Handmaid's Tale book discussion will be held at the Sturgis Library Tuesday, March 28th at 6.30. The discussion is free and open to all. There are no board, committee, or commission meetings today. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be back Monday morning with another great show for you. On Monday, we'll chat with Cape Cod Commission Technical Services Director Glenn Cannon about a very important road project in Katuit. We'll also find out what's happening at Cape Cod Community College with spokesperson Michael Gross and so much more. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.